Hey there, this is Rebecca. Today we're going to cover the atomic notation. The atomic notation consists primarily of mass and atomic numbers. Before we go into the atomic notation, I would just like to direct your attention to two different pieces. The first piece is the history of an atom. So the atomic notation is derived from where an atom, modern day atom, is coming from. Um, if you haven't already understood the history of an atom, I would highly recommend for you to click on the link above to learn more. The second piece is looking at the atomic composition. So what comprises of the modern day atom? And if you don't know, the three pieces that make up what an atom is now, again, feel free to click on the link above to learn more in that perspective. The first piece on atomic notation is this symbol right here. We're going to break the symbol down. This symbol is a symbol that you're going to be using throughout chemistry. The X represents an element. So any element on the periodic table, usually we would place it in that X position right there. On top of the X to the left, that's a superscript. So it's almost like an exponent, but to the left hand side. Um, the subscript, which is the Z at the bottom of the X, these are two different pieces. The first piece, the A represents the mass number. The second is the Z represents the atomic number. A lot of times students really get this piece confused and they usually mix this up. They usually think, oh, A must be atomic number and so Z must be mass number. What I want you to remember here is that this is very counterintuitive in atomic notation. The A is actually mass number. It's A does not stand for atomic. Just remember that. So the atomic number, the Z, that's the subscript. That's the number assigned to the element. And that tells us the number of protons and electrons in that atom. Atomic mass is represented as A. And that symbol is a mass assigned to the element. And it tells us the mass of protons and neutrons in that atom. So remember, um, the atomic compo composition composes of protons, neutrons, and electrons, but not all of them are found in the atomic number, and not all three of them are found in the atomic mass. It's important to remember that in an atomic number, you only find proton and electron in that atom. Atomic mass, that mass number, only tells you the amount of protons and neutrons in that atom. The periodic table of elements have atomic number and mass number flopped. Um, on the periodic table, actually, the mass number is on the bottom and the atomic number is on the top. So here's another counterintuitive piece for you. The periodic table of elements, the top left-hand corner, that's the atomic number. The bottom number is the mass number. The X is the element, so every single element is a different symbol on the periodic table. Now we're going to take a look at an example. We're going to look at aluminum. So knowing what we've just learned, here is what we would do to calculate the number of protons, electrons, and neutrons um, based off of the atomic notation. We know aluminum, the X, here is Al. We know the mass number A is 26.98, so that's the mass number. We know the atomic number on the top left hand corner, that one is 13. And so again, atomic number tells us the number of protons and electrons in that atom. So number of protons, it's 13, so there's 13 protons and there's 13 electrons in an aluminum atom. The atomic mass tells us the protons and neutrons in that atom. So it tells us the total. Okay, so what's here, what's important here is it's not 26.98 uh, 
protons and 26.98 neutrons. It's not the same as how the, the atomic number is assigned for protons and electrons. Here, the atomic mass, that mass number, is the total amount. So 26.98 is the total amount of protons and neutrons in the center. So the atomic mass is pretty much the mass number found at the center of an atom in the nucleus. If an aluminum atom has 13 protons, right, so we know that has 13 protons, we know the mass number tells us that it has 26.98 protons and neutrons, then we can put together a mathematical equation to solve for the number of neutrons that are in um, aluminum. And so the total would then be 26.98 protons and neutrons minus 13 protons gives us 13.98 atomic mass units of neutrons. So it tells us through the atomic number as well as the mass number, the total different numbers of protons, neutrons, and electrons. Just by using these two values that are given to us, we know that there are 13 protons, there are 13 electrons, and a quick calculation tells us that there are 13.98 neutrons. Here, the importance to remember is depending on the problem, there will be units and there will not be. The units here are in atomic mass units, and atomic mass units just means the units for atomic mass. And usually we abbreviate this as AMU for short. If you found this video helpful, again, it would mean a lot to me if you can like or subscribe. So thank you so much.